Hey, my name is Michael Costa from ADSR Sounds, and welcome to this first look video at a brand new plugin from Sample Magic called Stacker. So you may be asking, what is Stacker? Stacker is essentially an advanced drum designer tool that is comprised of three sample engines, along with a single analog modeled synth engine, insert effects, and a mod matrix to give you the utmost flexibility when crafting and creating your own unique drum sounds. Now, since this is just a first look video, we're gonna look at some of the basic functions of Stacker. We'll navigate the user interface, explore some of the presets, and we'll touch on some of the more deeper functions and how you can automate those parameters and come up with some really cool, unique drum sounds. So let's get right to it and check out Stacker. All right, so here we have Stacker and I have it opened inside of Logic Pro 10. Now we're gonna just be looking at some of the basic functions of Stacker and just taking a look at its user interface and we'll touch again on some of the more in-depth features, but again, this is just a first look. We're just kind of getting our feet wet and taking a look at what Stacker has to offer. So as I mentioned, Stacker comes with three sampler engines, as you can see right here in the top left. Here's sampler engine number one, number two, and number three. And besides that, you also get an analog modeled synth engine. And this analog modeled synth engine also comes with an actual noise generator, which is really cool. Now, the synth engine is really crucial for creating some very sub-heavy kick drums, especially if you're doing trap kicks and you want some really deep 808s, or you know, if you're doing some techno and deep house and you need some really low-end rumble to your kick drum. This is where you'll be able to really dial it in, tune it properly, and with the noise generator, you can add a little bit more bite to the front end on the transients, or you can completely shut off the synth oscillator and actually just use the noise generator for creating things like hi-hats, snares, or any sort of like weird effects and things like that. So let me just take a look at the synth engine real quick. And let me play the Power Kick 6 preset that we have pulled up. Okay, so there's that kick drum. And if we solo this section, so there's just the synth engine, and you can see that that's what's providing the, the low end and more of the sub tones of the kick drum. And we can actually use the filter here and bring that up. And now you hear more of the click. But if we shut this off, here's our noise generator, and let's bring the volume up on this. And right there, you can already see that you can use that as a hi-hat, and you can totally shape this around and come up with different types of sounds, like little snares and hits and things like that. I personally have always liked using a noise generator to enhance the transients of my kick drums because this also has a noise envelope. You can really dial that in. So if we have this on, you can turn it into just really short noise bursts. So you can almost kind of emulate like a closed hi-hat. Or you can even make it pump. And that's what's cool with the envelopes here is you could totally shape them any way that you like. And these are all eight stage envelopes. So you can add a point here, move it around. Another one here, bring it back down. And bring the sub oscillator back in. So you can come up with some really, really cool combinations, which is just really awesome. And at the end here, you have a set of low pass and high pass filters to really shape the overall tone of the synth engine here, which is great. Now at the top here, obviously this is our mixer section, which gives us control over the volume for each of the layers. You have solos, mutes, typical things, and you also have your two auxiliary effects ends, one here and one here. And what are those effects? Well, right over here to the right, the first one is a delay. And the second one to the right here is a convolution reverb. And this is really cool because with the reverb, it uses impulse responses. And there's a ton of free impulse responses that are out there on the net that you can download. And it's great because Stacker allows you to import your own impulse responses. So let's take a listen really quick to the reverb and the delays on here. 
So let's send a little bit of the delay here and we can solo this. So if we take a look at our delay, you have control over the timing here. Feedback and stereo width, which is nice. You can have it kind of ping pong left and right. And you have a filter there so you can kind of darken it if it's a little too bright. And you have a pump envelope. So the same thing that we were doing with the noise generator, you can do with your delays. And this is great because you can really shape how the effect sounds. Another thing that's really cool too is that both the reverb and delays have their own presets. So you can come in here and actually choose from a set of presets that are in here. And let's take a listen to, let's say we want to do just quarter note, real simple. And if we use the envelope here. So you can see there how it's, the delay is actually delayed itself and it kind of just ramps up. And again, it's eight stage envelopes, so you can really shape how you want the delay to react and come up with some really crazy combinations. So really cool how you can totally shape your effects. You have an EQ as well here to really shape the tone. And again, you have a set of low pass and high pass filters. The filters themselves, you can choose between 12 dB, 24 and 48 or you can leave the resonance there and you can just crank that up if you like. On the reverb section here, it's the same thing. You have a ton of presets that you can choose from. So if you simply wanted to sidechain the reverb, you could. And let's send some reverb over here. So you can see that pumping is already happening there, which is really cool. Right here, you can see the impulse response has been loaded and you can toggle through a bunch of different impulse responses. And you can see that's changing. So I think it's really cool that there's a bunch of, you know, different impulse responses here that you can choose from that come with the factory presets, which is great. And I think it's awesome that you can, you know, import your own as well. So you can really customize, you know, your tones and effects that are gonna shape your overall kick drum sound, or actually any sort of percussive sound that you make with Stacker. So just with those few changes we did, that's what the kick drum sounds like now. And obviously you have the ability to load your own samples. So I'm pretty sure that's what everybody's wondering about. So if you click on this little arrow that's pointing down right here, you have the option to choose from, of course, the factory library. And if you click that, so here's all the different categories of samples that Stacker comes with. If you click it again, you can also choose from your hard drive. So if you have an external hard drive, wherever it is that you have your own personal sample library, you can load your own custom samples from there as well. Now, when you load a preset here, so right now we have this PowerKick 06 loaded. These are all the samples and the synth engine and effects and everything that are associated with it. You can reset and remove if you want to just take this one sample out and replace it with one of your own or if you want to just try different ride symbols so as you can see this is a ride that has been loaded as part of this preset so what that means is then you have quick access to just all of the rides that are part of the factory presets here and you can test them out so let's say we click to the right here we can click again And if we want, there's a little thunderbolt here to the right. And if you click on the thunderbolt, that just randomly selects any of the rides that are within that category. So if we click it, so as you can see, it's in no particular order, it's just randomly grabbing rides. And this is cool because you can just kind of do this and you can click the little thunderbolt on all these parts and come up with a different variation. So let's Click a Thunderbolt over here and something here. Now we have a completely new, you know, sound. Even on the effects. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, a whole nother kick drum, which is really cool. So this is great if you just want to come up with something really quick and you know, you're know you not really into programming. You can come up with so many different combinations here. It's It's pretty insane, but it's definitely fun to mess around with. All right, so now we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at the sample engines that are on board Stacker. And you can access those again by simply clicking up here in the top left corner, right below the channel strip, click once, and that brings you into the sampler engine. If you click it again, that now shows you that particular sample engine's channel strip. And that is the same for all of the sound parts here. So if we click on this one here, there's the sampler engine, we click it again, there's its channel strip. Same thing for the third sampler engine, there's its channel strip. Click it again, it takes you back to the section here where you can import the actual sample itself. And same thing for the synth part. Click it again, and there is the channel strip for the analog model synth. So let's jump back over here. And so here we are, here is the sample engine. And we're going to start here on the left. And the first thing that you'll see here, it says channels. And this is actually a really, really cool function because this allows you to flip the stereo image. You have left, right, but some sound sources may have certain things that may be on the right side and other parts that may be on the left side. And maybe you want to flip that around. You can actually do that right here from this particular section. Um, this is also really useful for taking maybe a stereo sample that you have. If you need to flip it into mono, then you can also do that by simply clicking here. Another really important part here is you also have the ability to do phase inversion or what they call flipping the phase. And this is really, really crucial when you're drum designing if you're stacking maybe three or four parts together you may run into some issues that people normally refer to as phase issues and you may have certain sounds that may be canceling other ones out and what that does is it can actually take away from the tone or the actual punch of the sound overall kind of bringing the entire volume of that particular drum sound down a bit so this is really, really useful that you can actually flip the phase on each of these parts. So if you fall into any phase issues, you can come into any of the four sources here and actually flip the phase on it. So this is really, really useful. Now, as we move over here to the right, obviously you have your normal functions with a sampler. You have your start point adjustments that you can move around here. You can grab the end point here so you can adjust the end point. And you also have the ability to set a particular loop point, which is pretty cool. You can come up with some really interesting effects here. So um, one thing that you can do, and I know this is kind of jumping ahead, but you can actually assign the loop point here to a particular macro. So let's say we want to take macro one. So let's say we switch this and we want to choose macro one. And the target can be, let's say, sample engine number one. We want to control the loop. You can... Now, let's see if we play it. Let me just solo this section here. Okay, so you can hear what's happening there. But you can assign this to a macro function and kind of do the same thing. There we go. So you have to switch it to bipolar. So you can see the idea. I mean, you could do some really cool things. And obviously, you know, when you start assigning this to different noise sources or whatever, you can come up with some very interesting effects. So it'd actually be really cool if you could see the loop point moving. So hopefully, you know, they update this. I'm pretty sure they will. Um, I'm hoping um, it would be nice to get some visual feedback, you know, to actually see this moving around if you have it assigned to a macro. So, you know, exactly what's happening. But, um, you know, who knows? You know, maybe we'll see that in an update. Keep our fingers crossed. So you also have the ability now to, from this section, from the drop-down menu, you can also, of course, you know, import your own samples from this particular area as well. And you have the right and left arrows, so you can actually toggle between different samples. And again, we have a tom that's loaded in this particular sample engine as part of this preset. So let's take this off and switch the loop off. Okay, so the tom is loaded there as 
part of a layer. And so as you toggle through, obviously all it's going to do is pull from the different Tom samples that are part of the factory presets, which is cool. You can also use the Thunderbolt, as you can see it here. So you have access to the Thunderbolt directly here, and you can randomly choose different Tom sounds. So really useful for coming up with some different variations on this particular preset. You have the ability here also, we can switch the velocity on or off. So if you want to have it velocity sensitive, um, you can do that. Or if you just want it to trigger at full velocity, then you just shut it off and there you go. And that is per sample engine has that. So you can have some parts actually that are velocity sensitive and other ones that just will trigger at full volume all the time. You also see that you have your panning here. So again, basic functions, tuning. So you can tune in semitones and then you have fine tuning right here as well. Now, another thing that is really cool that I'm digging is that they actually give you stereo width control here. And this is again per sample engine and even on the synth part. So if you have some headphones, you may wanna listen so you'll actually hear this or on some studio monitors. But as we increase this, You can hear the imaging is changing, which is great. And another thing that's really great is that there's an actual crossover point here. So you can actually set this. Let's say if I wanted everything below 120 hertz. So let's get this at, and then just leave it there at 124. Um, so anything that's below 124 hertz will stay centered in mono and everything above actually gets the stereo width treatment. Um, another thing that's cool is that you also have a sample delay here. So as we move to the left, so you can get some really, really wide stereo effects happening. And again, I think it's really cool that it's all built into Stacker and you don't have to use any additional stereo widening um, utility plugins. You, know, you have it all right here. You, you really don't need to add anything else. And at the end, as we've seen with some of the other channels and everything, you have a set of high pass and low pass filters again to really uh, clean up the sound a bit. You know, if you need to darken it or if you need to roll off some of the low end, you can totally do that right from here as well. All right, so now let's take a look at the actual channel strip insert effects on each sampler engine. So again, if we just click again that brings us into the channel strip section and you can see that we have one two three four five six different effects or things that are happening here on this channel strip so if we start over here on the left side it starts off with digitize which of course is a sample rate and bit crusher for lo-fi effects so if you're looking to get your drum sounds like an old mpc or maybe an sp1200 or something like that this is the section where you could totally do it because you can change the sample rate and the actual bit depth. And what's cool is that you actually have parallel processing. So that allows you to mix between the dry signal and the affected signal. So you can have it 100%. or 50%, or maybe you just wanna add just a little bit of touch. And you can totally do that. So really cool to have that digitize function on here, sample rate and bit crushing all built in. Now next to it on the right is clip filter, which is a combo of a multi-mode filter with a distortion unit. Now, the one thing that I really like is that you have a couple of different models to choose from. So you have your classic tube saturation. Um, you also have wave folding. And again, parallel processing. So you can mix between the dry signal and the wet signal. You also have a filter here, so you can actually, if it gets a little too bright, you can roll that off a little bit. And you can choose between low pass, high pass, and band pass. Now, 
Now, one of my favorites is actually this wreck distortion, which is, it sounds really good. Almost sounds like you have like some, like a noise generator on it and everything, but it can get really bright. So again, that's where this low pass filter would actually come into play. And a little bit of the, just the parallel process. Maybe we only want like 10%. So you can see you can get a lot of different tones and flavors by, you know, using a combo of the digitize and the clip filter, which sound really good. Now, next to the right, we have the zero flanger and the zero flanger effect basically gives you a positive and negative feedback. And of course, also has the through zero flange for that classic jet wash effect. Uh, for some of you DJs, you may see that stuff on like some of the Pioneer DJM series mixers when you click in the flange and you get that really jet washy kind of effect well it's kind of the same thing let's check out what this sounds like we can adjust the depth we can adjust the rate and right here is where you can choose between a positive negative feedback and then the through zero jet wash So again, really, really useful effects that are all built into the channel strip on every single sample engine, including the synth engine. Now the mod shift section here, you have ring modulation, of course, parallel processing. So let's turn it up 100%. And you can choose between frequency or note. You also have frequency shifting, so you can do ring modulation or frequency shifting. Now to the right here, very, very simple. We don't need to really get into it, but you have an EQ. Okay, and it's a two band EQ with low shelf, high shelf and peak models. So there's your low shelf, high shelf and peak. That you, that you can choose from. And you get a nice 12 dB of gain controls. So all the way up to 12 and negative 12. And you can really dial in how wide or sharp the boosts or cuts will be with the Q controls. So again, really instrumental in shaping your sound and kind of carving out specific frequencies and stuff. So really cool that it's in the channel strip. And at the end here, of course, you have your low pass and high pass filters again that you can adjust, roll off some of the low end or roll off some of that top. Now, these are not a secondary set of filters. I know that you saw this in the sampler section as well. So you may be thinking that there's a bunch of redundant low pass and high pass filters. And these are exactly the same. So you see, I'm going to put these both in the middle here. And if I switch back to the sample engine there, See, it's exactly the same. So it's the same low pass and high pass filter. You just have access to them from both menus. So you can access it from the channel strip or you can access it from the actual sample editor screen here. And if you click on the global function, that is the same as well here. So when you're in the global area, this gives you access to all the filters on all different sound sources, including the uh, auxiliary effects. So it just, it's quick access to basically make those adjustments. You don't have a bunch of redundant filters. It's just you have access to them from different menus as well. Okay, so for even more in-depth control, and the sound designers and tweak heads are really going to love this, Stacker gives you four modulators. One, two, three, and four. And each of these modulators has eight stage envelopes. And that means that you can insert up to eight different nodes to really shape the envelope curves in any way that you'd like. As you can see, you can get some really crazy shapes going on. And this may look familiar to some of you if you are a massive user or you have programmed sounds within Serum. 
this really allows you to control and get some really interesting kind of LFOs going on. Now, besides having eight stage envelopes, you also have a bunch of presets that you can choose from. So there's a lot of mod envelope presets that are in here. And this is really cool. So if you don't want to really spend the time drawing anything, there's tons of different envelope presets that you can choose from. So there you have some dubstep lasers. Um, and again, you can use the right and left arrows to toggle through the different mod envelopes, which is really cool. And of course, you've got the Thunderbolt here, which randomly goes through and just picks different ones. And you can do this while you're auditioning a sound, and this is a really great way to just come up with something unique. And again, you don't really have to really spend the time programming. You can simply just kind of randomize and go through the different presets in there, which is great. Now, if you do create your own custom envelopes, you can also save that. So that's another really cool function is that you can save your own custom mod envelopes. And again, you have four different modulators that you can assign anywhere that you like. Now, if you click on the loop function here, the loop function essentially turns the modulator into an LFO. So this is really cool. And you have an adjustable rate here as well. So you can sync it to your DAW and have it clocked right to your sequencer, which is cool. And you can also change the grid setting here. And as you can see, it's updating on the screen there. So again, really, really cool. Okay, so there's another feature that I want to show you, and that is by far my favorite within Stacker, and that is the scatter function. So right here at the bottom, we click on the scatter tab. Scatter is essentially a time displacement function. This means that you can set the individual amount of delays for each layer to be triggered resulting in a much more dynamic or live kind of sound. And this is essentially how you get those really big, you know, kind of stacked, lazy kind of claps. Now, I switched over in Ableton because as I was playing with Stacker, I came across something that I thought was really cool, so I wanted to just share it with you guys. So I'm going to show you this particular feature inside Ableton Live, and then we'll switch back over to Logic really quick. So let's just play the sound really quick. So you can hear that there's a little bit of a delay, you know, it's kind of those lazy claps. And if we take these different blocks here, this is, these are for all the four layers. So sample engine one, two, three, and then of course the synth engine layer here on the bottom. And you can move the time back and essentially giving you a, a you know, that delayed triggered kind of sound. So if we play this all together with all of them starting at the same time, this is what it sounds like. And I'll start playing it again and just take a listen as I start to move some of these blocks back at different points in time. So you can see you start getting that kind of lazy, delayed kind of clap. And that's really big. And of course, hip hop and, you know, a lot of the future bass stuff, future R&B, and even some deep house tracks, you'll hear that kind of happening sometimes. But you can actually automate these different blocks. And since you can do that, now you can get some really, really cool things happening where your claps will always be changing dynamically over time. So it just keeps the ears kind of interested because it's not going to sound exactly the same over a long period of time, which is cool. So when I kind of thought about that, what I did was I created an actual audio effect rack here. And what I did was I went and dropped in four LFOs from Max for Live, and I assigned each of these LFOs to each of the positions of the scatter function. So each LFO is assigned to each particular time position for each of the sample engines and the synth engine. So you can see the, the potential here. Obviously, you know, it needs some fine tuning, but you get the idea. You can really do some awesome things with Stacker and using the scatter function. And this is just one really cool way that you can kind of come up with your own unique fat stacked claps. But I just thought it was really cool that you can actually go and assign those different time blocks within the scatter feature over to like LFO or something like that and come up with some really, really cool things.
All right, so we're back in Logic Pro 10, and we're going to round this out now with the bottom portion here, taking a look at the global edit functions of Stacker. So if you click on the global tab, which we are here right now, um, you can see that you have access to the length, the tuning, and the width of all four layers by simply controlling that from a single fader. So what that means is you can come into each individual colored section here and you can control you know, the milliseconds of the length for each of the samples individually on each layer. Or you can just grab this fader, which does it globally for all four layers at once. So you can move it to the left, to the right, and adjust the length of the sample of all layers all at once, which is very cool. You also have access right below here, you have the four colored dots, and if you shut those off, then that means that this global fader now is only controlling layer two and layer four. So again, it just makes it really easy to get, you know, easy access to some simple editing functions across all layers at one time. And you can do the same thing here with tuning. You can individually tune each of the layers or globally grab this fader and tune everything up or down 12 semitones. And the same thing here at the bottom too, you can adjust the stereo width. So you can do it individually or global fader here and mono to the left or bring it all the way up and enhance the stereo width by dragging it all the way to the right. Now you also have control over MIDI velocity here. So to the left, you have the four colored dots. So if you want all four layers to respond to um, MIDI velocity, then you would leave those on. But if you want to shut some of them off, you can. And those particular layers would automatically always trigger at full 127 velocity. And right below, you also have control over the key track. So if you want, again, every single layer to follow the pitch of the keyboard as you play up and down, and basically have your kick drum or your particular drum sound in various pitches, then you would leave the key tracking on. And if you have a particular layer, let's say like on the synth layer, where maybe it's just using noise and you don't want that to pitch up or down, then you can you know shut that off and it'll just stay at the one particular pitch that you have it set at constantly, no matter what key you play on your keyboard or drum pad controller. And right below, you also have control over how the samples are triggered. So you have envelope mode, which is basically like one shot mode. And you have the gate mode, which basically it only plays the sample for the length that you are holding down a pad or a key. So that's your envelope and your gate modes here. And you also have access to controlling whether you want the layers to respond in mono or poly modes. And Stacker has actually 16 voices of polyphony. So um, having something in, I mean, normally with your drum sounds, you're okay with having them in, you know, in the mono trigger mode. But if since we have all these different effects on here, like big reverbs and delays, if you want those delays and reverb tails to continue to play as you re-trigger the drum sample, then you'd want to switch it on to poly mode. So I think it's just really cool that you have that functionality and the ability to trigger that right here in this global section, which is great. Now, if we move over to the right, you see that we have our four macros. And Stacker obviously gives you a lot of control and you have four macros and a macro is basically a dedicated knob or slider that can control multiple user assignable functions and macros have been again extremely popular in synths such as massive from native instruments and expert records serum so again you can take this one knob here and you can assign multiple functions to it and by sliding this up and down you can trigger well you can actually control things like the loop you can control the reverb and the delay sends and pitching up and down, all kinds of different functions, all from one single knob. And you have four macros that you can actually assign and do that with. All right, so we have two other tabs here, and we have the amp tab. And of course, this is access to the ADSR envelopes. And this is, of course, where you can shape your sound from the attack, decay, sustain, and release of the samples or the sound. And we switch that on. And as you can see here, as with all the other envelopes, it, they are eight stage envelopes. So you can click it and really kind of shape it however you like. And as with the other sections, you also get a set of presets. So you have amp envelope presets and you can get a soft attack and you can use the cursors where here with the right and left arrows and you can go through the different 
um, amp envelopes that are on board, you can also click on the Thunderbolt and randomly select different amp envelopes. So really, really cool way to shape your sound. To the right of this, we also have the pitch envelopes. So we switch that on and same thing, eight stage envelopes. And if you want to get some really, really cool, you know, kind of clicks, you know, with your kick drums, obviously you've got some pitch envelope presets that are in here. So you can do quick drop. You can also cursor through different ones, a little Thunderbolt button, and you can randomly choose different pitch envelopes that are on board here as well. And with the amp envelopes and pitch envelopes, you can also create your own, as you've seen, and you can also save them. Now to the right over here, you see we have the mod matrix. And with the mod matrix, Stacker allows for 11 sources to control over 90 different targets with control over the depth. And you can also switch between uni and bipolar modes. And you also have a simple bypass switch here. So you can just click on it, shut it off, turn it on if you need to A, B, anything. So the mod matrix is really cool. And this is, again, where you can go and assign those macros. Simply click on it, choose a macro, and then you can go over here, choose a target. So if we want to choose the size of the reverb, we can do that. And over here, you can go and assign, you know, macro number one again. And, you know, assign this to maybe, you know, the sample engine number three, and maybe to the flanger delay. And so again, really, really easy to do. And it's just really great that, you know, Stacker has this functionality built right in. Now, if we click on the global tab again, and let's head up to the root level of the presets. And Stacker actually comes with over 1,200 presets, which includes, of course, the drum presets, raw samples, effects presets, envelope presets, impulse responses, and of course, you know, your macro assignments. And this really just allows you to kind of mix and match between, you know, different presets and kind of come up with your own preset combos, which is really, really cool. And obviously, you know, by doing all these different things, you'll just have like an endless you know, array of different sound possibilities with your with your drum sounds and stuff. So, it, you know, you literally could be here all day just, you know, randomly clicking on the Thunderbolt and just going through all the different, you know, presets and just generating different variations of drum sounds, which is awesome. So just to kind of, you know, sum it up, you know, about Stacker, obviously I'm really, really digging it. Stacker accepts the use of WAVE and AIF files in both 16 or 24-bit at 44.1. And Stacker is available for both Mac and PC, uh, Mac OS 10, 10.7 and higher, and has been tested on 10.10 .10 El Capitan. And on Windows Vista and higher, up to Windows 10 has been uh, tested. So PC and Mac users, there you go. Stacker supports VST and audio units on both 32 and 64-bit platforms and the AAX platform for Pro Tools users. The total size of Stacker for installing is like less than 250 megabytes, which is great. And Stacker is available now on Sample Magic with an introductory price of about $88 and will normally retail for $117 after the introductory rate is over. So make sure you go and you know check that out. Uh, Sample Magic states that they will be expanding on presets for Stacker, which is great. Obviously, you can see with all the different combos and things that you can do here, it's really easy to create your own custom drum sounds. And I can only imagine that Sample Magic will come out with some really great expansions for this as well. And um, overall, the sound quality of everything, personally, I thought for me was really good. So big thanks to Shrews for sending this over to me and Mark Adamo for his assistance. My name is Mike Acosta from ADSR. Thanks for watching and make sure and go and get a copy of Stacker. You're going to love it.